How do you learn Chinese quickly? How do you learn Japanese vocab quickly? How do you learn any language in this part of the world? This part being Asia and Southeast Asia quickly. Well, there's no easy solution, but one thing that does it for me is having a really good grounding in just understanding what root words are in Chinese. Now, when I say Chinese, I'm not talking about modern Mandarin. Mandarin is just one tiny little modern snapshot of this huge beast that we call Chinese. And so Chinese, I'm talking about all of the dialects, languages going back and through to middle Chinese and then old Chinese as well. It doesn't mean that you need to memorize all of these different languages and all of these different etymologies, but there are some general patterns that you'll see, say, between Mandarin and going back into, say, Middle Chinese or between Mandarin and Cantonese. If you speak any one of these dialects, you're going to find it easier to jump between languages. Also, say you're a Japanese learner, if you have this grounding in kanji, you're going to start to be able to predict what sounds some kanji might mean, or even kana, other kana that you've never seen before, could be hentai gana like we spoke about in a recent clip, then you're going to be able to have a really good guesstimate at what a given character might sound like. So I've actually built a tool that's going to help you learn those base pronunciations, almost like primitive Chinese forms that are going to help you jump between languages, whether it's Vietnamese or Korean or Japanese or Chinese dialects or even Thai. So here, like we're having, this is part of my series that we've been doing Chinese secrets through Japanese kana. And so what I've done here, I've built this sheet, as I mentioned in another clip, that's pulling from all of the hiragana syllables. And so there's a ha, if we go to like su, we can see them there. And so this is the modern hiragana that's come from this kanji. These were alternate kana, which we call hentai gana, but they all basically fell by the wayside and gave way to just this one character nowadays that we use. And here I've got the whole set. So that's sa, shi, su, se, so. That alone is pretty cool if you're wanting to learn all of these forms. And indeed, this is the set that I'm using to teach these semi-cursive and cursive forms of Chinese characters because I really believe through getting these forms into your muscles, in your muscle memory, you're going to feel more natural when you're actually using these characters either in speech or in writing. I know, I know that everybody's texting now, but trust me, if you can actually write with your hand, with a pen and even better with a brush, there's just something special about them and those characters become part of your identity. It's not just recognition of patterns anymore. It's just something that's inside of you. But look what I've done. Supposing I'm looking at this word ne. So I'll type in ne in here. So this is pretty cool. Look at this. Okay, nian. This is the word nen for year. In modern Mandarin, we say nian. And here is the kana for it. Actually, just before I go there, I've got to mention this about the kana form. So I mentioned this about how to write shou or hand turns into this and bang like that. Now have a look at the character for year. So normally it would be one, two, three, four, five and down. But look at this. The fast form of it is basically I'm going one down around bang and bang. And that is the fast form. So look at the difference between, so we have nian bang going across and then we have shou. Almost the same. This has another kick coming out, but this is basically the standard cursive form for year. And we can see it here and that was used as kind of, and this is an even more stretched out one. But anyway, I digress. We're not here for that in this session. We're here to look at my new tool to look at the actual pronunciations. So in Google Sheets, all I do is copy the kana I want. And then if you just slide across to this section here that I've done, I have a new section on the right. And so all I have to do, you can either choose it from the drop down list, or if you don't want to spend time looking for it, you can just copy it and command shift V. We'll paste it without formatting. You see them coming up here. Look at this. And this is the power of Google Sheets. Not only can I query 
Wikipedia or any page on the internet. So it's basically gone up and looked up this page here. If you go to en.wiktionary.org slash wiki and then put any word, it doesn't even have to be a Chinese character. It can be any word and you will see the full etymology, what languages that word is used in. And so I've got my uh, character here. So it's actually built this URL from here. And from that URL, I've actually put here some regular expression extractions. And so basically what it does is uses Google's power to go and pull in that entire wiki page, pass it, and then it searches for Baxter. Baxter Sagat is one style of Middle Chinese pronunciation or reconstruction. It's got the pinyin, so this character is nian, or in Yutping is nin. Nin is, so we've learned before, the second tone in Mandarin is this Ping Yang, which turns into mm, Ping Yang in Cantonese. So Nian, Nin. Kan On, so this is the Kan Japanese pronunciation, is Den. We have the Kunyomi, which is basically the Japanese word for year, but they still use the Chinese character. So here we have Tosh. So Tosh is the Japanese word, the Kunyomi pronunciation. There's also the Nanori. Nanori pronunciation for some kanji, actually for a lot, you will have your normal kun and your kan and your go on for it. But there's also the Nanori pronunciation that in some cases doesn't resemble any of those, but they're very special irregular pronunciations of kanji that are usually used in people's names. So sometimes even if you think you know a kanji, when you see it written in somebody's name, it's not going to be pronounced the way that you think it will be the nanori. And so the nanori pronunciation for this character here is ne rather than den or nen. Here we have for the go on. And then I've also put in here the readings for genom. So the Vietnamese nom reading. So this is the Vietnamese, Vietnamese style of reading this character. And also the Han Viet. Han Viet is basically the traditional Chinese pronunciation of this character in Vietnamese, according to Vietnamese phonology. And so we have usually these two sets of Chinese. They look very similar. So this one would be Nam, Nen, Nien, Nien could be any of these, but in the Han pronunciation is Nien. Now there's some junk around there. This isn't a perfect system. If I have a look at another character here, this, let's do roulette with a character or stop anywhere. Let's do that. What's this word? Okay, so this is Po and here it is how it was originally Ba. I guess that's similar to Ba in Thai as well. Here is Po, Po. Again, it's that second tone, which would be the fourth tone in Cantonese, is it? Yes. So Po. So Po in Mandarin, Lao Po is Po in Cantonese. Here Po, Hu, Ha. It goes back, it's aspirated to Ha. For the Kun, we have that pronunciation. There's no Nanori. It's ba in the go on and it's also ba, ba in Vietnamese and there's no Han pronunciation that it could find. There may be, this isn't perfect again. I've basically done regular expression extractions and it's gone through and just searched for whatever word that I put here. It will look for that on the page and see if it can pull something out to the right of it if it's in any kind of list. Pretty cool. But this sheet that I've built out now is basically a gold mine now for anybody wanting to learn hiragana, wanting to learn kanji, wanting to learn older styles of handwriting in Japanese, and also wanting to learn these ancient pronunciations or alternate pronunciations to characters, Chinese characters, whether it's in Japanese, Korean, even Thai. So for example, if I type in this word here, I'm gonna type in the word to fly. And so fly here is he in Japanese, and we can see this, I'll do another lesson on actually how to write it and why it looks like that. But here we have per turns to fei, fei, this er turns to a, Fei in Cantonese, Fei Yi in Japanese, He. And then if we have a look down here, we have Fi and Bai. Bai, the word in Thai for fly is Bin. So this could have come from Pen, 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 Bai, Bin. They're very similar. I think that probably Thai has the same etymology for the word Bin is the same as Bai in Vietnamese, which is the same as He in Japanese, which is the same as Fei in Mandarin, which is Pen, 
in middle Chinese all mean to fly. That's amazing, but it's really cool that we can actually pull this table in. If I look here, it actually gets wider and that you'll have many more. But basically anything that I pull in here now is going to show up if it exists in Wiktionary. Awesome stuff. If you want a copy of this, click on the link below. You'll generate a copy. Once you do it, it's going to be able to pull from Wiktionary like this and you'll have this super cool tool to be able to study your kanji and your kana in Japanese or whatever language it is that you're learning. I hope this is useful. If you want to learn how to do stuff like this and more, come and join my Minecraft program at jacademy.com. It's the prequel to Cracking Thai Fundamentals, an operating system for your mind to learn language and also tech, the tech skills that you need to be able to exploit all of the amazing data and information that's out there in the environment today. Don't forget to scan the QR code and come and join in the discussion in Discord. I'm Stuart J. Raj. I'll see you on the other side. Thank you.